They can go back to their bedrooms, a place that they would consider to be safe, and some of the worst bullying can happen there in the privacy of their bedroom. There's just no place for them to go that they can be away from this, and they never get a break from it. Lauren is a 16-year-old high school student who was caught in the midst of a war raging online. Yeah, Lauren first came to our youth group, and she was just this energetic kid. I mean, just, she was just the life of everything that we did. She was always the person that had everybody laughing, and even as a, as a middle schooler, she was just full of confidence. She was just a joy to have in the youth group that, with what she just brought to it. But near the beginning of high school, Lauren was targeted to be bullied. What I began to notice that she was withdrawn. Uh, she would come to youth group some nights, and instead of this bubbly person, she would come in and she would almost be broken. A lot of the insecurities, like, with myself started, I, th I remember with, like this girl came up to me and she's like, where's your neck? The models or the, the stars in magazines or on TV, they're always made to be super perfect. But then when you see girls with perfect stomachs, perfect legs, perfect hair, perfect faces, then you're like, oh, maybe it's just me. Like maybe there's just something wrong with me. Lauren's insecurities became the targets of insults in person and online. It just began to come out that, you know, through, through cyberbullying and just some challenges that she was facing, it was having a huge impact on her. I had these girls who would constantly, constantly be posting on each other's Facebook, making statuses, and it would be um, like calling me names, saying that I was ugly and that I was fat. I didn't understand that people could actually be that mean. And so I was like, wow, like these things have to be true because nobody's gonna just hurt you on purpose. We learned this week of a young British teenager who took her life after relentless bullying on Ask.fm. It was reported yesterday that at least 14 suicides in the UK and Britain are being attributed to anonymous bullying on this very website, which is attracting 6.3 million visitors. The most recent victim of hostility and ugly comments, a 16-year-old in the U.S. who committed suicide. Jerry, what can we do? Well, I can tell you that Ask.fm is now changing their rules, and they're taking the cue from Facebook that has an actual suicide prevention group monitoring it at all times so that if there is suicidal ideation, and I tip my hat to Mark Zuckerberg and his team, they immediately reach out. So Ask.fm started on the wrong foot. We trust they'll get it right. It's a reality of, you know, social media, these kids live on it. And a lot of parents don't see, the, and every parent said to us, we should have been reading our child's Facebook. So in the documentary, we have an entire section on cyberbullying, what to do, the danger of it, etc. Teenagers take things so personally. It helped me in watching the documentary to get inside the mind, the worldview of a teenager. Peers are everything. Well, what people think of them matters so much. And I remind kids, you know, that social network that's so tight in your grade 11 or 12, you won't even remember three or four years later half the, half the kids in your class. And suicide, as we know, is a permanent solution to always a temporary problem. And I want to just emphasize, these are preventable deaths. Oh. But the key to prevention is information. And that's why the leadership at Crossroads said, we've got to do an entire documentary curriculum on this. And then we've got to do a genre of these kind of videos. And very candidly, as you know, you've been in TV a long time. It takes a lot of money to do this quality of effort. And I'm happy to tell you as an American, people all over the United States are recognizing Crossroads skill in doing this. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be distributing these products throughout North America. Yeah, the investment's huge. Wow. I, one of the producers said it really represented a year of her life, <laughs> just the documentary that she was responsible for. But it's so worth it. What we're getting is what is most current and compelling. And uh, I'm surprised at the impact this had on me. I thought, I mean, I'm on the inside track here. Yeah. Uh, I, at least I think I am. I'm hearing <laughs> from all of you. But uh, yeah, it was sobering. 
Maura, let me also just again emphasize to our viewers that the teen book and the documentary, and uh, Anne has written a dynamic curriculum that helps parents and youth groups really ask the questions, extrapolate, because a lot of people kind of feel like, how do I get my footing around this topic? She's done a beautiful job. It's right on the inside and the book. We're putting together as a bundle set, and for a minimum gift of $100, uh, we want to put this into every family's hand every youth group. I mean, you know, when you see this up close like I have, and I've been in the back of an ambulance with a kid OD'd with quaaludes, I've seen every kind of manifestation of this and the foot of the bed of a kid comatose because they found him too late hanging. Mm. When you see that, it motivates you. And I want to motivate all our people. Let's care and let's make a difference. I'm glad that we have the remainder of this week, one more day, and all of next week to unpack more issues and to hear from more people who are really on the inside of this, either as survivors or people who are wanting to make a difference. Like Tamar Katie, which is a nice story. It's a survivor.